No, thank you. Thank you. Just give it a couple of minutes for the rest to join. Who's left to uh, a few more to be assigned? So give it a couple of minutes. For those that are joining, it is recording. So it won't be too long. Okay. Just give it one more minute and then um, we'll look at um, kicking off. So I'll give it a second. How many people have we got now? Nine or so people, which is good. So welcome to those that have just joined us. Thanks for jumping in. So a few more numbers going up now. Um, yeah, there's a few joiners now, which is good news. Just watching the unassigned participants going down. So uh, that's, that's really good. It's fair to roll into the different rooms now. Hi, John. Hi. Great stuff. Just checking that everyone was in and you're recording already. Thank you, Tony. I'll yeah. over to you. Thank you very much, John. Yeah, just give it a couple more minutes. I think there's quite a few jumping in now. So let's just get one or two. Brilliant. Right. So we're looking at two minutes past uh, 12. So in the interest of time, we've got sort of 20 minutes or so to, to get through what we needed to. 25 minutes or so. So we will start off and, and firstly a big thank you to everybody for joining us in the in this workout uh, workout session. Um, and uh, you've joined us Travis Perkins PLC in League for Apprenticeships and Early Careers as it says on the, the slide there. Um, and what we'll be covering is turning the table uh, and what can meaningful encounters tell you about your learners. So Marianne I know you're in charge of the slide so I'll let you flip on and, and uh, go to the next one. So just a quick um, overview of the agenda that we're going to go through. We sort of split it into three areas, really. If we do get time for Q&A at the end, we will do that. But so we've got quite a bit to get through, so it'll be quite snappy. The first bit we're going to go through is just a quick introduction and background to give you a bit of context around why we're here, I guess, and some of the, the areas that we come from. Um, the second part we'll go through from myself, I'll cover this off, an employer perspective. And that's a bit about transitioning into work. And we'll cover off things that we've seen through different schemes and we'll bring up speed on those. And some things recognised as an employer provider as well, uh, been in the industry for a long time. And the third bit we'll go through, which Mariana will cover off for us, is an employer perspective. And that's covering off some of the school career activities that we've done and the, and the things that we've been involved with over the past few years. Uh, and we'll go through some of that. So that's the bit of the agenda, and I'll say Q&A at the end if we can. Marianne, next one. Very quick overview. I can go into lots about this, but I've been in the industry for construction supply for 30 years now, um, which is a tremendous amount of time. But what it has done is given me a massive opportunity to understand the industry really well. I've worked in various roles, uh, whether it will be from being a part-time customer assistant when I first joined, um, when I was back in sort of 17, right through to now where I've done regional roles, manager roles, divisional roles. And the last five years, latterly, I've been in sort of apprenticeships and early careers. Um, and I'm the early careers manager now, which is a bit of great news working with Marianne and the team. So Marianna. Hi everyone. Um, so yeah, I work with Tony as early careers lead. And our kind of main jobs are to help internally um, colleague engagement to our apprenticeship programs that we run and externally brand awareness and um, apprenticeship awareness as well to so work with schools, send communities and charities and prisons as well to help people get into work. Great. Thank you, Mariana. Um, we thought it'd be really quick to, or really good to understand some of the things that have been through. So if you have questions and things, please use the chat initially. Um, but there's four sort of areas we want to pick out, and there are lots of other things that sit around this, but the four key things I think will sort of give you the background of what we do. Um, we ran a kickstart scheme, one of the biggest in the UK. Um, we took on uh, 630 young people, uh, 16 to 24 year olds into the scheme, which is a six month scheme as you might know or may or not know. Um, and during that time, we had the opportunity to interview over 2000 young people. So then my team um, of 15, we, we had the opportunity to actually reach out and try different methods of recruitment. And like I say, over 2000 people were involved at that stage. 
it entitled us and enabled us to do lots of different things. Firstly, understand the challenges that young people face coming into the business and, and into uh, transition to careers. Secondly, um, how we could help them through that program by helping them go on to an apprenticeship after that. So out of the 630 people that we had, over half of those then got permanent roles with us. And again, nearly half of those, again, went on to our apprenticeship roles and schemes, which does bring me nicely on to our apprenticeship schemes that we do. Mary and I cover that off very quickly. But uh, we've just graduated a thousandth apprentice um, through uh, graduation, which is which is really great news. But the point there is we've had all this opportunity to do this for over five years now. Because I've been here for five years for this team, but we've been doing this for seven years. So we've learned lots of things about how we help transition people and young people into roles into our business and continue that development from school and colleges. Recruitment wise, um, we'll go through some of the structure and the size that we do, but we actually recruit over 3000 people a year in our organisation. So you can appreciate massive scale. Um, but the key stats that we sit behind this is we've learned a lot from people under 25. Now, if they don't join an apprenticeship, there's a 50 percent labour turnover rate that we see, which is huge and unfortunate. Um, when we start to see people go on to an apprenticeship for those under 25 and leaving school, that dramatically drops to less than 20 percent, which is better than the company average. So we can see the benefit of decent career advice and helping them get through the, those sort of early stages into their careers to build that up. And they will stay with us by, by helping them do that. And the final bit I'll just pull out, and, and John alluded to it earlier on, both Marianne and I are doing a level six CDP qualification. So we've got a really, and we're doing that since September, so we've got a pretty unique understanding now of what's required, still some learning to do, and doing it, we're really enjoying it, along with the employer perspective as well, working operationally and also in apprenticeships. So that's giving you a bit of a background of where we sit. Marianna. Um, thank you. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an insight as to we're somewhat qualified to be able to talk to you today about careers. Um, we also just wanted to cover off really quickly who we actually are. So, you know, who's talking to you before we move on to the um, kind of more beefy bit later. So really quickly, this is the group that we work for. So we work um, for Travis Perkins PLC and they own a number of brands within that. So the top five ones are in that middle row there. So Toolstation, Travis Perkins, Keyline, BSS and CCF. And they are typically a builder's merchant um, so selling to the trade. And then we also have a retail arm as well and some of the smaller companies down the bottom. We have just got on there a couple of the Gatsby benchmarks as one element of our work and early careers is we can come out to schools and talk about who, who we are and then in turn um, meet those Gatsby benchmarks for you as um, if you work within the school. And secondly, Tony mentioned that we are part of the apprenticeship team. So we work for LEAP Apprenticeships and Early Careers. We have over 40, maybe even 50 programmes now. Um, some of them are on the screen and you should be able to see a website link as well at the bottom if you want to have a look yourself. Um, but as Tony said, we've done Kickstart, we've got apprenticeships, we've got over 1,000 apprentices graduated already, um, and we intend to take 10,000 in the next seven years as well. Um, so a lot of experience with apprenticeships, a lot of insight as to what kind of works, what doesn't work, how people can progress and how it can help your career path. Brilliant. Uh, just look at, I'm just monitoring some of the chat as well, um, and I'll respond to them as we can, and we might have to come back to some of those at the end. But Alex, I just picked up your your number or your message there as well. Um, so, yeah, I just want to cover off from the transition into work, and this has been from lots of experiences. Firstly, the Kickstart schemes that we went to, as you mentioned, over 2,000 people that we interviewed and put into roles and some really good success with that, along with some of the work placements and work um, experience uh, areas that we've got to. So there's a few things that I picked out, um, and we've picked out there's sort of four in different areas, and there's lots of different things we do. So we try to categorise these three main bits. Um, the first one is on attitudes and behaviours. Um, a big piece in there for us that we've noticed, and that's not only when people come and join us on schemes or initiatives, but also when they join us in a probationary period, is the accountability that they hold. And a bit for me there is around being resilient, holding themselves to account on their own learning, holding themselves to account to how they come across in the employment. Um, and also, um, when you're in the probationary period, is it really following sort of company policies and procedures that, that are there? And there's a, a lack of knowledge and understanding of there's a policy and procedure we need to, to adhere to, and how we do that could mean you actually staying with us in long term or actually leaving us and departing early. So taking accountability and learning those areas and reaching out for, for people um, and the policies is really important to us. 
Um, the other one there that I've reached out to is about time um, management. Now we've come across lots of experience, lots of incidents or experiences where uh, young people coming into the role don't necessarily see the importance of the timekeeping in, in lots of different ways, whether it's be turning up early to work, five or ten minutes early, whether it's coming back from breaks. That has a massive impact on team dynamics, and it's one of our pet hates when it comes down to line managers um, when dealing with young people. Reputation, a big one for us, um, and we've come across lots of things here where um, it could impact references and future future opportunities if somebody comes across in the wrong way. And we've seen that in lots of places. So for example, social media, um, the, the big one for us, it sort of ties into phone use really, is bringing the company into disrepute. So young people don't necessarily understand the impact of if they say something adverse to the business, what that could have on A, the reputation and B, their prospects going forward. We see that as gross misconduct as, a, as an employer, uh, and that could lead to them losing the, the position if they post something that's not relevant or, or dis disrespectful to the business. Just quickly moving on to interview readiness. Um, I, I think that the biggest thing that we fit in here is the confidence at interview. So not only just comes down to body language and how they come across and the, the anxiety piece of meeting people and going through it. Yeah, <laughs> hearing confidence is have the confidence to in, almost treat it as a, a two-way interview. Interview, so we, we'll be interviewing somebody as a, a prospective candidate or person joining our schemes and our business. And actually, it's as much about the student and individual or the candidate knowing about us. And they don't understand that sometimes and don't, don't come prepared to ask us questions and find out more. So use the opportunity to have the confidence of really speaking to speaking out and find it as much as possible about us during that process that, that interview process. Something that, that sort of startled me a little bit over recent weeks is the young people don't like to do, we do virtual interviews, a lot of them, more so now than we have ever because of hybrid working, but young people getting into virtual interviews don't want to do it. They feel uh, awkward about seeing themselves on screen, just watching themselves come back and how they come across. Um, and we, we've actually set up some different things where we can help uh, some schools actually do virtual uh, interview, mock interviews. So the others are really lacking for us. Awareness of alternative methods, I think, is um, another one that we've come across in lots of different areas. So examples I give you is about uh, recorded interviews. Again, people not being aware of how to come across um, group interviews or elevator pitches. Uh, observational so there's lots of different methods that we use there is a primary one that we do but actually those things that sit outside of it are they exposed to it do you understand it and what is the method being used by the employer recruiting that individual at that time and the final one i want you to pick out on the interview readiness is firstly understanding where their behaviors and beliefs sit as an employer so the employer have their own set behaviors and conditions that they have i guess um, so understanding how their behaviours match what we do and if they are suitable for them in the first place and also what those future roles look like. So that could come back down to the questioning. We know that we're changing forever and we've got to adapt as a construction supply, whether that would be more digital, for example. So what are those roles that they could get into that might not be relevant now, but in next year, two, three, four, five years, what are they? And could they question us and understand and talk to us about them? Finally, around relationships. Our business is built on relationships. So the four key pieces we picked out on here is around feedback. Um, and that feedback for me is when in the probationary period, young people and students and people join us for, for the first sort of six months or so, just almost get their heads down and not, don't quite understand. So it's just as important for them to receive constructive feedback from them line manager as it is for them to provide stuff to us. Are we getting it right? Are we not? And we often hear people leaving us because they don't understand the next steps, for example, or they, they leave us that six months because where do they go to? They don't understand their performance. So they can take that initiative and actually go back to them about what's my feedback. Teamwork's a big one for us. We work on teams. It's about dynamic in teams and how they work individually within that team and add value. Initiatives and cons with employees. Um, there's a couple of things that sit, sit out of this one for me is we often get people wanting to have a job with us who come through our inquiries line and it will literally be a one liner. I'm interested in apprenticeships. I want a job. And it's almost that first impressions that we have. We go, well, what am I dealing with here? What am I? Are they interested in this or is it just a blanket thing? Are they just take? And we have hundreds of those coming in on a sort of monthly basis. 
and we have to respond back to everyone and we will prioritize the ones that are really important that the ones that really show interest by explaining what they want to do um, and what they know about the business so really big one for us and the final one there is around individuality now we can talk about you know people join us who might be neurodiverse or have a neurodiversity or uh, barriers to work now, what we tend to find is with people coming on board, some of our managers probably aren't aware of how to deal with it and, and help support somebody. And actually we find that people with a neurodiversity, for example, can be quite shy. So actually they've got loads of things that they have real strengths on. So tell us about your strengths, tell us about what the value that they bring to the team uh, and in the areas that they can add, um, you know, that team diversity piece, because we really want to include that and we recognize those strengths. So as a whistle stop tour, what I want you to do is really just very quickly for the next couple of minutes or so, is just pop it in your chat box. Is there anything that you can share best practices in, in your sort of organizations, your areas, that might add value to some of these things that we've picked out? Um, and maybe you're doing some of those because that's not in all cases that I've read out there, but in some. So can you share best practice in chat box? We can share some of those for you at the time. We'll go through a couple. Um, it'd be great to do that as well. Really great point. And I'll try and answer this as we go through. So Emma, I appreciate the, call, the the message you put in there. So what do you look for in a candidate when they are initially applying for a role? I get you don't want to see them in normal liners and blankets. So it's much, it's more about have they done a little bit of research um, and a little bit about themselves. So for example, some good examples, if it's a, you know, just a, a snip that they want, is they'll tell us a little bit about themselves. I'm coming from this, this college this, and I'm doing this course. I'm interested in getting to this field. Can you help me get into that field? What apprenticeships are available? And, and it's more about that. So it starts that dialect. So we don't have to go back and say, well, what are you looking for? Um, it shows us that doing a bit of research and we've got various websites that we could use. Uh, I think you put down how much information you're looking for. Yeah, just minimal. So if it's just a small paragraph, it'd be fine. Um, when I've answered those calls, I've been more inclined to go back to those. Are young people asking about your green sustainability? Absolutely. Um, not as much as we thought it would be, to be fair, Jackie. So we, it's a massive push for us. That's the future. We are changing things in relation to um, uh, refits and, and uh, so on and so forth, and those green green skills that we have in the future, uh, air skills um, and so on. So. They are asking us, but not as much as we thought it would be, but they need to ask us more because that's absolutely where we're driving. We've got new apprenticeships coming up that cover this off as well, cover those fields. Jackie, many uh, young people are still worried about how disability. Really great question. We've had this recently, actually, where we had somebody um, who was just going through uh, being diagnosed with autism, for example, um, and they asked the question in an interview, should they should they declare, declare, declare that? Um, my advice to you would be 100%. We're an inclusive employer. We would like to know, not necessarily know it from a detrimental point of view, from an actual point of, that's really good for us to know because we know then how we can help support you through that process. Um, yeah, they shouldn't be uh, um, worried at all. We have changed massively in, in that sense. Is there uh, employment for someone who has autism special? Yes, Samantha. So um, I really like the art question there. So 100%, we, there are things we've done through in uh, in supported internships. Um, so we've got MENCAP, for example, we support and other areas. I guess the challenge that we face sometimes with that is finding the right location for it. So we can organise that. So Marianne and I, through the process that we have, there's a, we've got the emails on there for you. We can... Um, find the right location for that, the right branch, making sure that they're in the right place and give them the support to do that as well. So 100% for it. Um, I'm conscious of time. We will come back to some of the questions that have been put forward. So I will pick up on those, Maz, as you're going through your next bit. But thank you for your questions, everybody. I'm just gonna pass it over to Maz for the next bit and I'll ask these as we go. Uh, thank you. I'll try and speed through this so we've got plenty of time for Q&A. Um, so we also just wanted to kind of feedback from an employer perspective as to two things that we've been involved with um, over the, well, every month really for the last year and just give some employer insight into what works or what doesn't work. Um, so the first one being career fairs, so tasks and quests and activities going on. So from a school perspective, one thing that we have suggested twice that has worked really well is having like a stamp or sticker activity, like a bit like a loyalty card that encourages the students to go around and visit every stall. And they have to have a conversation in order to get that stamp or sticker. And that's really helped them 
have that reason to go and speak to that employer um, or apprenticeship provider or um, education provider um, when they might not be so, quite so forthwith, forthgoing if they didn't have that kind of piece of paper to encourage them to go. Um, and another thing for stalls to have interactive activities, you can really tell when a stall has got sweets or an activity or a game that will draw people in. Um, the next one comes before going to an event. So from an employer perspective, it's really great to know exactly where we need to go, where we need to park, what we need to bring, if there's like electrical points, because a lot of people will bring um, laptops or screens to kind of present from, um, the size of the the pitch that we kind of got and the target audience. So what are the year groups coming in? We'll come back to this point in a moment. Um, and then follow up wise, we love being able to give feedback um, and being invited back into schools to do a follow up session to make sure that we've added value and see the students again. In terms of what can be better for a career fair, some events can be quite long, so it results in students mingling um, or even still holders actually leaving early from the whole event. So our advice is to shorten the time that the students can come in, but then open it up during their breaks. So whether that be lunch or the breaks um, before and after where they can come back in in their own time if they want to follow up conversations. Um, and small side note here, one school that we attended allowed parents to come in during the pickup time, which was really good because you saw the, the parents being engaged and even learning themselves about opportunities for them, which was really, really great. Um, apprenticeship awareness, a lot of students don't know what apprenticeships are or they feel that it's not an option for them because there's so much pressure to go to university, whether that be from the schools or parents. So it's one thing that we notice an awful lot when we go. And then finally, a lack of knowledge about kind of who is coming um, and who's attending the fair. So again, another school that we've been to has preempted that by giving the students a pack to say, right, these are all the companies coming. And then that allowed students to go away, research what um, the companies are, and then target the stores that they want to go to that are relevant to what they want to get into. And then the next one is work experience. So again, a couple of good things and a couple of things that can be done better. Um, firstly, it highlights hidden careers. So we took on 10 students recently and gave them a real insight into builders and merchants, and not just the shop aspect, but the HR, marketing, finance, IT, all of those departments that we don't know exist until you're kind of in it. Um, obviously, it builds great relationships between the employer and the students, and, but also the school and the employer, and you can continue to go back in and add value. And then in regards to what to do better, Tony's already covered timekeeping. Um, biggest one for us is probably making sure we match the students up to the um, positions that they're going into so that they can really um, understand what it is that we offer and does that match their interests and their needs going forward. And then finally, embedding the learning. Um, so whether that's engaging with teachers directly so they can follow it up within their lessons, or the one biggest thing for me is making sure that there's like a guide or a pack that they can re reflect on at the end of every day and keep that forever. I've still got mine from over 10 years ago. And because I had to do that reflection piece of what did I learn on every single day? What are the names of the people that I worked with? What would I do differently? I remember my work experience like it was last week, which I think is something that we can really support students with. Um, I appreciate that was really quick. Um, we just want to open it up to questions um, and again what works well what what do you do to address those things in those situations um, but I'm going to just move on to the next slide so you've got our contact details if you so wish to follow up with us but now we just open up for the next couple of minutes to questions so feel free to come off mic and shout them out or type them in the chat box. Miles, I'll just quickly pick up on a couple of questions I haven't answered yet. So yeah. uh, Janet, you, you asked there, um, have your contact details and address? Absolutely, just there for you. Um, hold a conference with schools and colleges in Cambridgeshire in the section where you explain about an employer would require for an interview. Uh, yes, absolutely. Depending on times, obviously, and when we can do it, I'm sure we can sort something out for you. If you can, please, Janet, drop us an email, Marianne and I, so we can pick it up when we've got registered because we won't, we won't be able to get access back to this, this chat. So please feel free to do that. Thank you very much. Um, can we a little bit so we got on there? Anything else? Donna, yeah, I picked up on the one you said about there. We have employability days where students have to uh, deliver an elevated pitch. That is really good, and we do that a lot. Um, and sometimes there's like two or three different stages that we go through, um, which help. So it might be an elevated pitch, first of all, we're inviting them to a branch for an experience point and get 